Hello, and welcome to a rather gorgeous summer's morning here in Brussels, which is, of course, the Belgian capital. You join me outside Brussels' Midi, Zoud, or South Station to give its name in French, Dutch, and English, respectively. Now, it's been a while since I've travelled around in this part of Europe, but today we'll be heading up to the Dutch capital, Amsterdam, with their national operator, NS, aboard one of their international intercity direct trains. However, somewhat unusually for me, I still need to buy my ticket for today's trip, so without further ado, let's head into the station. Entering the station, we can see that it's all quite modern and functional. Now, despite this, Brussels Midi dates all the way back to 1869, although obviously the current station building is much more recent than this. In addition to the NS train we're taking up to Amsterdam, the station also sees service from Eurostar services to London, which can be accessed here, as well as Talis high-speed trains to Paris, Cologne and Amsterdam, SNCF TGV services to the south of France, Deutsche Bahn ICE services to Frankfurt am Main, and even overnight nightjet sleeper trains to Vienna. In addition to this, there are also shorter distance trains to neighbouring Luxembourg, as well as an array of domestic, intercity and local trains to all corners of Belgium. Anyway, as you can see, there are a good selection of retail and food outlets, which, let's face it, is essential for a major railway interchange such as this. This is all the more handy for us, as NS don't provide any form of catering on their services between Brussels and Amsterdam. Now, I was hoping to be able to buy my ticket from a ticket machine, but it would appear that, for international trains at least, a visit to the international ticket office, which you'll find located between the Eurostar terminal and the passageway to platforms 3 to 6, is required. While today we were quite lucky and only had to wait around 20 minutes to be seen, the ticket office can get very busy, with it not being uncommon to see it queuing out of the door. So perhaps factor this into your journey, or, you know, buy your ticket online and in advance. With my bank account now around 55 euros lighter, I have my ticket in hand and it's time to head up to the platform to board. Honestly, considering that this is the walk-up fare, I don't think that's too bad at all, especially considering that it doesn't tie us to a specific train. Services on this route run hourly throughout the day, so you shouldn't ever find yourself waiting too long for one. Anyway, I think I've waffled on enough for now, so we'll discuss a bit more regarding fares in a bit. But for now, it's time to head up to platform 14, where our train awaits us. And here it is! The first thing that strikes me is the iconic yellow and blue livery that NS trains are adorned in. Personally, I love it! Anyway, the coaches used here on NS's Intercity Direct services are ICRM Prio coaches. Now, these were built throughout the 1980s, and... In addition to seeing service on the Brussels to Amsterdam route, they are also used quite extensively domestically within the Netherlands. These current trains are set to be replaced by new Alstom Caradia based units over the coming years. However, these trains have already been granted a stay of execution on this route once before, thanks to the failed high speed and rather controversial FIRA endeavour. Nowadays, the only high-speed services available for you to take between Brussels and Amsterdam are operated by Talis, which we'll be taking a look at on my return journey, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, in terms of haulage, we have these Class 186 Bombardier Trax locomotives at top and tail. Our full train is capable of 160 kilometers an hour, or 99 miles per hour. Right, let's get on board. There are no seat reservations on this train, so we're free to sit wherever we like. Well, as you'd expect from a Dutch train, lots of space for storing bicycles on board. To bring a bike on board NS International Trains, a bicycle ticket costing €12 Euros is required. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that's rather expensive. We'll be travelling in second class today, and as expected, seating here is in a 2 plus 2 configuration with a mix of airline style and Baser 4 being offered here. Even at 6 foot 1 or 185 centimetres, I found the legroom here to be very good by second class standards. Seat back pockets and tray tables of the large and sturdy variety can be found on the back of the seat in front, and a litter bin can be found by the window. 
Above the window you'll find some coat hooks, as well as some sort of reading light. As for the seats, well, they're not too bad in terms of comfort. Certainly not the best out there, but also definitely not the worst either. As for the Baser 4, well, they just feature these little tables by the windows. The only thing that's really missing for me at these seats are plug sockets, especially considering that this journey will take us the better part of three hours. Speaking of our journey, before we set off, we should probably take a quick look at our route for today. Our route will see us heading north, via Antwerp and into the Netherlands, and continuing on to Rotterdam, before finally arriving at Amsterdam Central Station. Scheduled travel time today is 2 hours and 50 minutes. And we depart Brussels Midi, bang on time, at 10.45am. Goedemorgen, beste reiziger. We make a couple of stops as we make our way through the city, the first of these being Brussels Central Station. A short time later, we arrive at our next station stop, in the form of Brussels North. I must say, Brussels seems to be a hive of activity when it comes to the railways, with tracks and trains constantly appearing left, right and centre. It's really quite impressive actually. We then make a brief stop at Brussels Airport, after which it's full speed ahead towards Antwerp. Like the sound of ad-free early access to videos, all while helping to support the channel. If so, be sure to check out my Patreon and channel members pages to get this for as little as $1 per month. Links relating to this can be found in the description below. Our next stop is Mechelen, this lovely little city which lies about halfway between Brussels and Antwerp is known for its historical art. Before too long, we find ourselves navigating the outskirts of Antwerp, which is of course the largest predominantly Dutch speaking city in Belgium. We do make a couple of stops within the city itself, the most notable of these being Antwerp Central. Now, I'm told the station's concourse is somewhat of an architectural wonder, so I suppose I must take time to pay it a visit at some point in the future. Yeah. 
Not too long after leaving Antwerp, we arrive at Noordekamper, which will be our final stop in Belgium. I must say that, even at full speed, the ride quality of these coaches is remarkably good, especially considering their age. I found them to be pretty much silky smooth. Anyway, we now find ourselves crossing over from Belgium and into the Netherlands. As we run alongside the adjacent A16 motorway, this would be a good time for me to point out that even older trains such as this are usually faster than cars. A short time later, we arrive at Breda, our first stop in the Netherlands, and where our train will change directions before continuing fast onto Rotterdam and Amsterdam. We're also running just a few minutes late at the moment, apparently due to a broken down train being in front of us. That said though, we're soon back on our way once more, and with that, I think it's time for a wonder. I had hoped to have a good peer through at the loco, but to be honest, I dread to think when this window was last cleaned. In fact, all of the windows on this train were pretty filthy. Anyway, the train is now quite busy as we get closer to Amsterdam. That said though, there are still plenty of seats to go around which is good to see. However, there are also additional fold-out seats in the vestibules, should you need them. The second coach is from both the front and the rear, are where you'll find first class accommodation. The layout here is broadly similar to second class, albeit in a 2 plus 1 configuration. At the far end of each first class coach, you'll also find a pair of six seater compartments, although sadly I was unable to show you these as they were all occupied. As for the interior, sure, it's a bit dated and not exactly inspiring, but I guess it's nice enough. Now of course, no trip report is complete without a look at the toilets. Well, these ones weren't exactly the cleanest, but I guess at least everything was stocked up and working as intended. And lastly, this may come as a surprise to some, but this train is not Wi-Fi enabled. Although I did find that phone signal was very good for pretty much all of the trip. Anyway, we now find ourselves in the Netherlands' second city, Rotterdam, and closing in on its central station. Rotterdam is known for being home of Europe's largest seaport, with the port handling around 470 million tonnes of cargo annually. You can also change here for nearby Hook of Holland, where you can catch the twice daily ferry service to Harwich in England. You'll find a review of that one in the top right corner if you're interested. Before too long, we find ourselves in the very outer reaches of the Dutch capital, and just a few moments later, we arrive at our final intermediate stop of Schiphol Airport. <laughs> so, my thoughts on this trip. Yeah, it was pretty nice actually. The trains were fairly comfortable and the atmosphere on board was quite nice. That said though, it would have been good if some form of catering was offered on this service. Whether it be in the form of a fully fledged restaurant car, a buffet style counter service or even just a mobile trolley service. Also, NS International should probably take a little more care regarding the train's cleanliness, particularly in relation to the toilets and windows. As for the cost, well, as I mentioned earlier, my ticket was around 55 euros. 55 euros 80 to be exact, actually. This fare includes 50 euros 80 for a one-way ticket, plus a 5 euro booking fee. However, if you book in advance, then you may be able to pick up a ticket for as low as 26 euros one way. The cheapest first class walk-up and advance fares that I could find were 84 euros 40 and 36 euros respectively, so it definitely pays to plan ahead on this route. 
but overall, a fairly nice journey. However, this is just my opinion, so do let me know your thoughts on this trip in the comments below. All that's left for me to do now is to welcome you to the rather splendid Amsterdam Central, where we've arrived around 10 minutes late at about quarter to two. <laughs> With that, I'm off to go and explore this beautiful city. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more NS trains, then why not check out my Dutch playlist? A link can be found in the top right corner of the screen now. However, in the meantime, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, why not give the video a like as it really helps us out. If you're new to the channel, then be sure to subscribe and enable notifications as I publish new trip reports every Friday. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next Friday.